One of the absolute biggest mysteries currently plaguing the world of Kingdom Hearts is the truth of the Black Box. Originally given to his apprentice Lushu by the Master of Masters for concealment, it is said to be guarded by Keyblade wielders from time immemorial and that it contains hope and that it could never ever be opened by Lushu. While the contents of the box is more likely only known to Lushu and the Master of Masters, I may have finally cracked the code due to many hints hidden across the Dark Seeker saga and with this one theory I can answer many huge questions of Kingdom Hearts and unveil the true plan of the Master of Masters and the idea behind the Lost Master arc. Because the black box does contain hope. One hope for one sky, but despair and doom for the other. What's up guys, it's HMK once again with another Kingdom Hearts theory. While the end of the Dark Seeker saga still left many mysteries in tow for Kingdom Hearts 4 and the future of the series within the Lost Master arc, the truth of the black box may set free a devastating understanding on where the series next plight may be headed. So if you're ready to open your mind and your hearts, be sure to like, share, and most probably subscribe to HMK. Let's dive directly into the darkness. Now, what is the truth to the black box that can answer all of your questions? Well, ladies and gentlemen, try to keep up. The black box is exactly just that, a black box in multiple definitions of the term. As a counterpart or even a true blueprint to the Book of Prophecies, the black box is a container and a counter for all history, worlds, events, people, hearts, on record since nigh the beginning of time. Much like one of the meanings of a black box, aka a flight recorder, the box holds an account of a flight in the undesirable event something should go wrong with the flight so that the events can be recreated to see what went wrong. And in the other sense, in terms of computing, remember this is really important, the black box of Kingdom Hearts falls into the other term of a black box, in which it can be seen as a system that logs in and records input from stimulus and then infers a response and produces an output. While the inner workings that converts input to output within the black box isn't public and it cannot be viewed, it still does its job. In other words, the black box is the end-all be-all server to all data in near existence to the world of Kingdom Hearts. But how does this start to answer the burning questions? Well, for starters, it explains why Maleficent was attempted to control the data for all of the worlds, as seen in Dream Drop Distance when she tried to bargain Queen Minnie's life for the Jiminy Journals. She initially got the idea from the supposed knowledge she has on the nature of the black box, knowing it indeed has a connection to the Book of Prophecies. But hold on folks, this is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the black box's truth, as even the name on the box, when translated, refers to this identity as the black box is designated with Key Super. Although the Greek letter Chi or Ki isn't truly the last letter in that alphabet, within the lore of Kingdom Hearts it is implied that it is, as the most ancient letter, one that spells death and endings. With Ki meaning final and the word super's meaning, Ki super can be translated to the last above all, and with the box containing hope, it can be viewed as the last hope above all. But now we get to the full breakdown on this idea and the existence of such a box. Prepare yourself. The Master of Masters has existed for an unknown amount of eras, being from a time where the Keyblade War, or rather the war between light and darkness, continued to fuel and where darknesses looked just like people, rather than the forms they take now. With this concept of the world ending and beginning anew, Time and time again due to this war, the Master of Masters constructed this black box using his destined gazing eye to record all of existence and contain it as data within the box. Even now, the box continues to accrue information on everything needed should all that is be lost. And it is to this effect that the Master of Masters use for this box is to recreate everything that is in the event that the world should return to dust. This includes worlds, people, memories, hearts, everything. Think of it as a system reboot. And when you truly think about it, this would explain something incredibly dark within that of Kingdom Hearts. Repeated events and shared mannerisms among the chapters of time and the characters themselves. 
which probably means that the Master of Masters rebooted the world using the black box multiple times already, and that this is where it leads into the answers of some of the other incredibly popular questions in Kingdom Hearts, along with the identity of the Lost Master Arc's fine point. The Master of Masters has seen many, many battles within the Keyblade War, and has admitted to himself and a willful darkness that he is tired, much more tired than he has any right to be when it comes to the outcome of the war. Which probably means he has seen the world rebooted several times to come back to the same focal point only to live through it and reboot the world again. But this is where something that he could not even fathom comes into play. A world he could not even imagine. A world of fiction. A world of unreality. The world of Quadratum. Quadratum is the key to his current plan and the identity to the Lost Master arc. Seeing that this world of Quadratum is a world without light or darkness, beyond the understanding of his reality, able to exist without the components of this eternal war. The Master of Masters plans on unleashing the black box in Quadratum to recreate all that there is from the universe of Kingdom Hearts in the world of Quadratum, in the world without light and darkness so that his universe, his reality, can become a true utopia and the fighting between light and darkness will cease and the Keyblade War will truly come to a close. To this end, he needs several specific keys. First, he needs the black box to get to Quadratum in order to open it there. This is why Lushu was tasked to safeguard it and to never open it, as in doing so would start the reboot process. To get it there at the right time, Stuart Letzia, otherwise known as the true dandelion, may be needed as a conduit to phase it into that world. Secondly, he needs to bring Kingdom Hearts into Quadratum in order to use its power to truly commence the reboot process in wiping the world clean and recreated in the image recorded from the data within the box. And this is possibly where Sora comes into play, being the last known wielder of the Keyblade that was able to utilize it in tandem with Kingdom Hearts. Perhaps he has a role to play in being the one to call upon the Keyblade once again to bring Kingdom Hearts into Quadratum. All of this was indeed a domino effect that ushered in a need for Xehanort in that specific timing of history to bring forth Sora's inclusion in the grand scheme of things, as well as placing him in the same point of time to come into contact with the Nameless Star, Yazora, and Stratletsia. But wait, if the Master of Masters needs Kingdom Hearts in order to execute his plan in Quadratum, what does that mean for its inhabitants? Exactly that ladies and gentlemen, that is what brings in the identity of the Lost Master Arc. Since the black box originates from the universe of Kingdom Hearts, the world of reality, it could only have recorded and contained the data from that side. If the Master of Masters uses it to conduct his plan in the realm of unreality, it will cost the lives of everyone and the existence of everything in Quadratum since their data was not contained in the box. This is the dark truth of this hope. And furthermore, while the box contains data, it could be surmised that this data will still need slates to be written upon. And that is where Kingdom Hearts comes in. Kingdom Hearts, in connection with the data of the black box, would wipe the memories, hearts, and existences of those residing within Quadratum to leave them as blank canvases to have them rewritten by the black box to make up the lives and hearts of everyone on record within the box. It is in this advent that will put Sora at odds against the Master of Masters and the other Lost Masters despite them being a faction of good, as this plan would effectively cost the lives of many innocent denizens of unreality in order to end the war they were never a part of. This is why Yazor needed to save Sora as Sora would be the key in preventing this plan being put into motion, and why Luxord was seeking the truth of this box while acting on behalf of Yazor, as he is also implied to be from Quadratum, serving Yazor in order to protect it. And then we come to Yazora. Yazora is the biggest key in tying this theory together as powerful potential proof, as this plan this essence of the black box, being able to do these things on the command of the Master of Masters, has already 
been tested on an extremely small scale. It was tested on Yozora. Yozora is the living proof of what the black box is capable of in rewriting a person's being, having Yozora's heart replaced with another's and presented with an appearance that isn't what he really looks like. Yozora's being, his code, was rewritten using the data within the black box to issue him a new heart, a heart very close to Sora. This is why he looks like Riku. But as this instance was experimental, Yozora was still able to retain his sense of self and even some awareness of his predicament. And it will be Yozora who will act as Sora's key to understand and unravel this unsettling plot by the Lost Masters to use the last hope above all in order to inflict their will on unreality. Their plan on Quadratum. A plan to scrap and build. And that could be the truth of the black box. Let me know what you thought about this King Mart's theory in the comment section below. Leave your comments and theories there while also liking, sharing, and most probably subscribe to HMK for more King Mart's content. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, check out my info in the description box below. And be sure to pick up some merch over at my shop at Fourth Wall. All right, guys, until the next advent of Kingdom Hearts' Lost Master Arc, this has been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.